Enjoy a relaxing game of checkers on a board designed in the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. The Appalachian Heritage Woodshop is brought to you by Christian Internet Services, common sense internet marketing and web design. Our internet marketing commissions are based on results. Robinson and Mackle, thinking business, practicing law. Waterlock's unique tongue oil and resin blend stains, sealers, and finishes. The go-to finish for wood enthusiasts since 1910. Appalachia covers over 200,000 square miles across 13 eastern states where you will find steep, rugged mountains, vast, lush forests, swift-moving streams, and valley farmland. Appalachian settlers were a unique breed. Isolated by the rough terrain, mountain dwellers had to be self-reliant and innovative to survive the harsh living conditions. I'm in Wayne County, West Virginia at Heritage Farm Museum and Village. I'm in the general store and I have Major Sims, one of the tour guides yeah. here. And today we're looking at the checkerboard. Can you tell me a little bit about this checkerboard? Yeah. Major? Well, it's always interesting. When you come to a country store, there's two things that you're going to see. Mm -hmm. One is the potbelly stove. Yeah. And the other one is the checkerboard, yeah. let alone the spit tune. <laughs> this is where all of the older men would come and socialize around a game of checkers. There was probably more feuds fought over the checkerboard than any other thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. it's really great. I noticed uh, a few unusual things about this particular checkerboard. Absolutely. Of course, it's got some veneer missing here, mm -hmm. but I noticed the veneer is a little on the thick side. Mm. You know, the yep. checkerboards that are veneer is usually a little bit thinner. Okay. Uh, if it's not veneer, then it would be made with solid wood, which would be quite a bit thicker. Mm. But I also noticed the size of the squares are a little bit smaller than what is a standard size today. Okay. Uh, and then you pointed out that there are more squares on this board than a, than a standard board today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first thing you notice is that it is wider and longer, which leads me to believe that <clears throat> other than checkers and chess, there could have been other games associated with this board. That's that's a good possibility, yeah. I really like the way they have the well here where mm. you keep the uh, pieces once they're removed from the board. And I notice it's just sitting on a barrel or sitting on a couple boxes. Right, absolutely, yeah. And that was standard. By standard the back in the day. And, and that way you could move it if you needed to, move it out on the porch sometimes if the weather yeah. was nice, or back in here catch a little warmth from the fire. Or in the summer if it's too hot. They Absolutely. They out on the porch where Absolutely. they have a little bit of a breeze. Yes. Yeah. So let's go back to the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop and I'll show you how to build a checkerboard. It doesn't matter if you're using hand tools or machinery in your shop. You need to know the safe way to operate your equipment. Make certain you have the proper safety equipment and most importantly, use your PPE. Be safe and enjoy your shop time. Ready to build the checkerboard. I've milled some walnut and some maple, and I'm ready to rip to the width. Normally when I build a chest set, I make the squares two inches, but this is a checkerboard. So I'm gonna make the squares an inch and three quarter. Standard size for a checker is an inch and a quarter and the larger king in a chest set is an inch and three quarter. 
but this is going to be a checkerboard, so I'm going to make it an inch and three quarter. Now many people would go ahead and take this cut off and run it through, but that's not the way I do it. Every time you make a cut on a board, you release just a little bit of tension. So what I'll do is I'll take the off cut and go over to the joiner and joint the edge so it's perfectly straight and then come back and rip it again. Okay, now I've got it dry clamped. Everything looks good. So I'm going to mark it. And now I'm going to apply some glue and clamp it back up. put it together I want to rub the joints together to get good glue contact on all the surfaces I prefer to clean the glue up as it squeezes out with a wet rag Some people like to let it gel and then scrape it off, which works fine also. Now I'm going to add a few clamps in the middle. And you can see some more glue squeezing out, which is good. Now I'm ready to set this aside and let it dry. I'm going to go ahead and start on the frame that goes around the checkerboard. I've already got this marked. So I've got some cherry. I'm going to cut it and then uh, dimension it. The cherry has a slight cup to it. So I'm going to face join it and then run it through the planer. I need to run it through the planer and get the other side parallel and flat. Okay, now I'm ready to joint the edge. So I'm back at the joiner. I've moved the fence a little bit closer to the edge so I don't have to bend over as far. It's not as hard on my back. And of course, I've squared up the fence. So I've got my fence set over, the height of my blade is correct, so now I'm ready to rip. Okay, I've got the boards dimensioned properly, now I need to cut them to the correct length. And the first thing I want to do is get a good square end on it. Got my miter gauge set up. So now I'm ready to square one in and then I'll cut them to the correct length. So now I can cut two of them to the exact length and I gotta make sure I put my square in against the stop block. 
Now that I've got the two sides cut, now I need to cut the two end boards. And they're a different length. So I mark one and line it up with the blade and bring my stop block over. Make sure my square end is here and now I'm ready to cut. Okay, now I've got my Datto blade set up in the table saw. Got my miter gauge with a stop block. I've already run a test block through to make sure it's the right setup. So now I'm ready to cut the rabbit in the sides. There you have it. Okay, now I've got the Datto blade set up half inch wide. Same height, 5 sixteenths of an inch. And I've got a stop block set up on my fence. So now I can take the side and line it up with the stop block. And I'll cut a dado, which will be the back of the well, as well as the checkerboard support. Okay, now that I've got the checkerboard frame dry fitted together, you can see what it looks like. Here's the half inch dado I just cut. This is the defining the back of the well, and it is also the support for the checkerboard. Now it's a half inch wide, and all my stock I have milled to 5 eighths. I prefer to cut a dado first, then take the wood and run it through the planer and then the drum sander until I get a nice snug fit. To me, that's a lot easier than it is trying to adjust the dado blade to fit the width of the wood. So let's go over to the planer and I'll run this through until I get close to the width of the dado. Okay, now that's real close. Okay, now I'm ready to sand the boards to the correct thickness and before i do i want to clean the drum a little bit so now you can see how the Checkerboard frame fits together. The dividers here need to be ripped to the right height. And before I do that, I want to put the bottom in. So I need to take the frame over to the table saw and use the dado blade and cut a groove on the sides and the front and the back to house the bottom. And then that'll tell me what size to rip the dividers. Okay, in the Appalachian area, people would not waste anything. And this is a good example. Here's a cherry board. And as you can see, the pith is right in the middle of the board. And the pith always splits. So what I'm going to do is cut the pith out and throw it away. And that will give me a board on each side of the pith. And I can take these over to the bandsaw and resaw them, and these will be the bottom of the checkerboard. Okay, now I'm ready to cut the pith out of the board. Just my guard a little bit, and I'm ready to go. Okay, now I've got the dado blade set up, 5 sixteenths of an inch wide. I've got it set over an inch from the fence, and I got the height adjusted properly. So now I'm going to cut the groove 
that will house the bottom Okay, now using the same setup with the Dado blade, I've moved the fence out of the way and put a stop block on it. I've got the miter gauge set up. Now I'm going to cut a Dado, which will be the dividers in the tray. Now I need to face joint the boards for the bottom of the checkerboard frame. So I'm going to do that here at the joiner. Okay, now I'm ready to run these through the thickness planer. Okay, now I want to resaw these cherry boards, which will be the bottom of the checkerboard frame. So I'm going to do that here at the big band saw that I use for resawing. So the first thing I want to do is raise my guard. And I want to bring the fence over. Now I've got the frame together, got the bottom in place. So now I can put the dividers in there and mark the height and rip them to the correct height. I've taken the checkerboard out of the clamps. I've already run it through the planer to smooth both sides. I've marked the maple and the walnut on here. And I've taken one of the pieces that were left over and adjusted it so it's the exact width of these pieces. Okay, now I've ripped all of the pieces and you can see I've got enough for two checkerboards. Now you can see the marks and this is why I put the marks there. What I want to do is every other one, I want to turn it around. And that will give me the checkerboard effect. So now it's just a matter of gluing them up, putting them in the clamps, and letting them dry overnight. Okay, now I'm ready to glue up the checkerboard. I got it laid out here. I'm going to take a little bit of glue Put on this and then spread it around. Got to have good even coverage, get a good bond. I'm using extended time glue 
Give me a longer open time. Now that I've got everything cut to fit and dry clamped, everything looks good. Now I'm ready to glue it up. So now I'm just going to disassemble it. Extend glue to give me a little bit more glue time, a little bit open time, so I've got plenty of time to get it fitted together right. Now, this wood has been kiln dried in my kiln, and it's the summertime, and I know this wood is not going to expand anymore, but it will contract. And with the little pieces here, I'm sure the glue's not going to prohibit it from moving that much. Tighten it up. Make sure everything's lined up properly. Okay, now I've just finished going around with some sandpaper and rounding over the edges. You never want a sharp edge when you apply a finish. I've got all that. I've got all the dust off of it. So now I'm ready to apply a finish. And what I've got is an oil varnish blend. I really like this type of finish. It soaks into the wood, really accentuates the grain. And since the checkerboard is a contrast, it'll highlight the contrast. So I put it on with a rag. I usually just take a rag and what you want to do is flood the surface. You want to get as much of it as you can on the surface and let it soak in. And there'll be some places where the grain will absorb it faster than others. And those places you'll want to go back and put a little bit more on there. So you want to keep it wet. Keep the surface wet. Now I'll get the edge here. After this has soaked in for about 15 minutes, I'll take a dry rag and go over to pick up any excess that's on the surface. You don't want to leave any excess on the surface because it will dry and leave a gummed up ridge on the surface which you don't want. And as you can tell the end grain really absorbs it in so you got to put a little bit extra on the end grain. set that aside 
and I'm going to start on the checkerboard box. Start on the bottom first. Really brings out the grain and collar in this cherry. Okay, here's the completed checkerboard. As you can see, I've got it set up to start a game. Now, these I bought, but you can certainly turn your own. But let me show you what's on the other side of this checkerboard. And this is what's really unique about this. You flip this over, and now you have a different game using some of these collared pins. So I hope you enjoyed this checkerboard here at the Appalachian Heritage Wood Shop. See you at the next episode. If you're interested in any information or plans on any of the items featured on the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop, just check out our website, AppalachianHeritageWoodshop.com. Remember, be proud of your Appalachian heritage.